Some police officers, it would seem, overstep their mark by thinking that they can confiscate your camera in any circumstance. And whilst there is a narrow circumstance that they can do so, it's not as clear-cut as they might think. I've had more than a few requests over the last year or two to talk about this issue, so that's what we're doing in today's video. Welcome back to the channel. So in one such case that I was sent uh, via tweet just today, um, the police have uh, threatened to seize a camera of Daniel Webb, who is a reporter and photographer and a drone pilot um, covering the Wiltshire and uh, that sort of area, specialising in breaking news and crime. Now, that Daniel sent me this tweet and said, for the first time in my decade-long career, a police officer threatened to seize my camera when I was photographing an arrest. It happened in Sirencester earlier this month. When I asked for the colour number, she repeatedly refused to provide it and told me I was obstructing. For clarity, she was not dealing with the detainee and when I approached her. The encounter was evidenced on my body-worn camera. Now, just as many police do, many uh, journalists and citizen journalists are wearing body-worn cameras these days to capture what the police are doing and to then talk about whether that was right or not. And very frequently, the police seem to be telling people that they are obstructing the police in their duty when in fact they are just doing what they're doing, taking photographs, taking videos and so on. The tweet goes on. Today I received an apology from the officer involved via Gloucester Constabulary Professional Standards Department. The officer says she will endeavour to do better in future. I understand the force is looking to train its officers, uh, Daniel says, in relation to the public and the press and taking photographs at incidents of or police personnel. This occurrence uh, will be used as a case study, apparently, he's been told. Um, it's completely lawful to take photographs of anyone in a public place without permission, provided the photographs are not indecent. Police can only seize cameras in circumstances where the evidence may have been captured or they should not be used, um, and they should not be using that law to prevent photography. And here you can see the um, photograph here of said arrest taking place. And I would agree. So I decided I would talk a little bit to you about this in this video because many people are confused as to when the police can detain evidence, in particular your camera. And with citizen journalism, as people refer to it, can't think of a better name, but you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, a lot of people are worried about the police taking their camera if you're taking photographs of something out and about. Now, the, it is right to say that there are going to be certain situations where the police are going to want to take your camera for very good reason. And there are powers that allow them to do so. However, it's not as clear cut as you're taking a photograph of somebody being arrested, therefore they can take the uh, camera away from you. Let's talk about the powers in England of Wales of when uh, police can seize something and when they cannot. And so with a focus on talking about the police seizing a camera and all the photographs and the videos, um, it generally stems from two bits of legislation. Of course, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, commonly known as PACE, and the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act of 1994. Uh, so focusing on those in turn, Section 9 of PACE does grant police uh, officers a power to seize items that are on a premises being searched under a warrant or with consent. And a police officer can seize an item if they have reasonable grounds to believe that A, it's been obtained in the consequence of a commission of a crime, B, it's necessary to seize it to prevent it from being lost, damaged or destroyed, which is sort of where this might come into play at some point. And uh, C, it's evidence in relation to an offence that they're investigating or any other offence. Um, but there is more, because you may be familiar with PACE codes, that is essentially codes of conduct with which police must act. And they are um, given uh, lettered codes. So police code, uh, PACE code B provides guidance in the exercise of these powers under PACE and says that officers should only uh, seize material that has a bearing on an investigation or a prosecution of an offence. So, I mean, quite plainly here, just photographing somebody being arrested is not particularly uh, prevalent in respect of the offence itself. More so perhaps if there were some situations, if it was uh, the entirety of something taking place and then included the arrest, then the police may come back and say, your camera's got something of evidential value. We need it. There is also the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act of 1994. Section 60 allows police officer um, of the rank of inspector or above <clears throat> to authorise a stop and search 
of any person um, or a vehicle within, within a specified area for a limited period of time when they have reasonable grounds to believe that there's incidents involving serious violence that might may or may have taken place uh, and the people are carrying dangerous instruments, offensive weapons and that kind of thing. Under Section 60, Sub 7, the uh, officer may seize an article found during a search if they've got reasonable grounds to believe it's an offensive weapon and so on and so forth. Whilst there's no specific mention of cameras here, there is at least a possibility that a police officer may rely on this section to seize a camera if they've got reasonable grounds to believe that it does contain evidence of the commission of a crime or it's been used in the commission of a crime. However, anything other than that is going to be an unlawful seizure. So just to summarise that position, if you've taken photographs or a video of an entire event unfolding, not that that is wrong because there's no automatic ban on, on taking photographs and film in a public place of this nature, save for the reasonable expectation of privacy arguments, which doesn't really apply here. Um, the obvious examples is, you know, a, a person in uh, the, the public who is in a private setting, such as a shop and a, a cafe, which has been noted before, or perhaps somebody who's going coming in and out of rehab or a specific type of clinic, that kind of thing. There's a reasonable expectation of privacy. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is some sort of offence unfolding. And so in a general public place, there's no general prohibition on taking those photographs and film of somebody in that public place. And the seizure of such a camera may well be considered unlawful if the police officer does not have reasonable grounds, as I've set out in this video, to believe that the camera and the photographs or video or whatever contains any evidence that is relevant to the offence or that has been obtained in as a result of the commission of a crime or linked with a crime and so on. Um, this may also be unlawful uh, if the police officers failed to comply with the codes of pace um, or any part of the acts that I've mentioned, such as um, obtaining, if necessary, the necessary authorization from an officer of relevant uh, rank for the stop and search and all of that sort of stuff. So um, I, I just wanted to make that clear because, uh, as I say, Daniel sent me this tweet um, just a little bit earlier and I found it to be a little bit odd um, that police be threatening to uh, take a camera like this. Now, granted, the police may not like having their photograph taken or being filmed, and indeed the suspects and the USD may not like that their photographs being taken. And you can see in this photograph here, in fact, all of the faces have been blurred out. Um, wise choice, you would say, because this is obviously an arrest and, and so on. Uh, but again, it's not absolutely mandatory because, again, there's no automatic right to privacy in a public place. And even if this is uh, going on in a public place, there's no automatic uh, application there. So um, by request and um, following up on the tweet from uh, Daniel about this, um, just to bring some awareness to this, I will link to this tweet in the description below. Uh, feel free to go and um, follow Daniel, check him out. But I just wanted to make this quick video to um, give this overview because I get lots of, um, you know, vloggers, journalists and, and, and whatever um, worried that the police are going to take their camera and threaten to take their camera. If you're in this position and the, the police do threaten to do that, uh, you can certainly tell them that it is unlawful for any of the reasons that I've set out in this video. Not that this is legal advice. It isn't. It is uh, general guidance on the general position of things. And if they do go ahead and seize your camera, despite all of the things that I've set out in this video, that would be an unlawful seizure and you would have a valid complaint, uh, most likely against the police and perhaps even um, civil remedy of damages for you know, handling your property without your permission, without lawful excuse and so on and so forth. So there it is, a very um, broad and yet specific overview of uh, whether or not the police can seize your camera. I hope you found that useful. Please do remember to uh, like this video and subscribe and send me those little tweets and things that you want me to talk about in future videos. And as always, I thank you so much for watching.